man washed out okay let's see here if I can get this right all right guys so I'm gonna be doing some towing this weekend for a camping trip and uh, I'm I've seen temperatures climb on the truck before and so um, I've read up online and I'm gonna do the quote-unquote um, fan override modification which involves grounding the navy blue wire to the fan um, and so normally what most people do is they'll ground they'll go on the side of the plug with the blue wire and they'll splice somehow and then they'll take that wire back under the dash and ground it into there which that part is going to stay the same I'm going to try to ground it inside the cab uh, what I don't want is a blue wire running through my uh, engine bay I, I'm not saying that's bad uh, for those of you that have done it that way that's fine I want it to look a little more factory, so I'm going to attempt to get into the wire right where it goes into the, I believe it's the PCM, over here on the um, driver's side fender. I think it's the connector that's the farthest back, but I'm not sure. That's uh, sort of a guess on my part. So, going to pull the battery out. I'm um, going to probably have to take the PCM off or at least get the harnesses far enough out that I can find the dark blue wire. <clears throat> I'm going to make the connection there and then try to make sense of a place to go through the firewall that that's uh, organized. Got a little roll of blue wire here to match. Um, and we'll get on with it here, guys. Alright guys, I happen to have Ford's uh, anemic standard um, battery connections. I'm hoping down the road to get these replaced with something a little more substantial but for now this is what I've got we're gonna get this battery out of the road here so that we can uh, work on this thing now I don't I'm not quite sure what battery powers and what doesn't so I'm gonna have to be careful with this terminal uh, let's see here take this off first Do I need to get a screwdriver out? Nope. And this other side here, I'm gonna place in a bag or something here. All right, so I, I happen to keep uh, bags around the shop for putting greasy stuff in or <clears throat> nuts and bolts or whatever in this case. Just going to give me a little protection and make sure that that doesn't come in contact with any metal, hopefully. So I just got two sandwich baggies right there. And then um, the retaining nut is right here. It's also eight. Ford seems to love eights. Move you guys that way just a little bit. Um, so we'll get that loose, get the battery out of here. That. Uh, we're gonna pull the battery out here. <clears throat> Do they just hasp down? I don't want to bust them. Yep. Okay. Whoa! Be careful. Um. Let's see here. So we're looking for. We're looking for dark blue. Um. I may be able to pull that cover off. I'm gonna have to look and see. Because Ford did a pretty good job of wrapping these up. So uh, we're gonna get this unplugged and find out which wire it is. Hopefully, I can do a continuity test and figure it out. Oh, there we go. You gotta pull them all the way back. Ooh, ooh, careful, careful. All right, and then it looks like the looks like the back comes off. Not quite sure how. Yeah, so I'm gonna real carefully pry these covers down after I have a look and see if I can find that blue wire. Actually, doesn't look like it's the first one here. I don't see it. Not the best light conditions for recording. Um, I got a little eyeglass type screwdriver and 
you can pry up on these connectors here and here. Be very careful not to snap those off. You're going to pull back with your thumbnail and just barely pry up. And it looks like it comes right off. Um, and then it's, it's wrapped really well, so I'm just trying to see if I see the blue wire in there. There's a couple of blue wires. Uh, what color is it? All right, somehow I forgot to turn the video back on. So when you're doing these clips, there's also ones on the bottom. You're going to invert it and just barely pry up on them here and here. I mean, just a teeny bit. And then this should pop off or slide back. So if it's got tape on it, it'll slide back. If it doesn't have tape, it'll pop off. So these are the ones you just barely pry up on on the bottom. And again, these are really tiny things, so you're not using any pressure to get this off. You're just barely detenting these back and it should slide off. This one didn't have tape. This one does. I see a blue wire right here. So we're going to do a continuity test and uh, I got to go grab the multimeter real quick. All right, we're going to make sure this works. You guys can hear the tone. I'm going to slip one wire in the connector over here. And the other wire I'm going to check down here. All right, I moved the camera over, guys, because of the exposure. So it's the second connector. And I'm going to point with another pointer, but you can see it sticking out. So it's the second row, second pin on my 06, second row, second pin from the right looking at the connector. I've got this screwdriver in it. It's blue. I thought it had a stripe. It actually doesn't. So second one in, second row down from the right. And uh, so I've got my wire now, and I'm going to uh, get back away from this connector a little bit and make my splice, and we'll do that here in a little bit. All right, so someone's already had this one apart here, and it's actually cracked. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this right there. It's cracked across the corner. Um, I definitely was careful and did not do that. So what I'm going to do is zip tie around the base of this so that I can keep that from cracking out any further than it already is. I may throw a little uh, super glue on there off the vehicle and then zip tie it. We'll see. Uh, so I'll get back to you guys. Oh, and before I do the splice, I'm going to try to find a happy place through the firewall. All right, guys. It's a little later in the day. I had to go do some stuff, get the tires balanced. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clip this wire. Probably down about here. About inch and a half down from the plug. I'm going to make sure this is the right one. Or I clip it, second one, second row, second one in. All right, now I know everybody says not to clip it, but I'm actually going to splice it back together with a heat shrink butt connector. And I'm going to bring it out on top so it's easier to get to. And if someone ever gets in here, it's right on top for them to get to. So, brought this to the outside where I can get to it. And I can bring the connector back to get myself any slack that I'm going to need. And so I'm going to strip it back. And then uh, we'll see about getting more wire on there. Alright, so... Some nice person took their handy dandy hunting knife and stuck a hole in the uh, super expensive main grommet so I get to fix that later. But in the meantime I'm going to use their kick-ass uh, automotive engineering and I'm going to route this through there. So the reason I'm doing this is I just ordered a um, weather pack connector, a bulkhead one, and I think it's like... 26 pin or something 
And I'm going to bulk wire that up ahead of time and then install it in this firewall so that I have a bunch of pins or pinouts that I can get to from this side and do my wiring makeup. So um, in the meantime, I'm going to use the, uh, nothing against rednecks, but I'm going to use the sweet redneck knife hole that someone put in here. All right. I got some uh, perfect way for water to get into my cab when I want it to. So, in the meantime, I hate to even do this because I'm splicing in. Uh, is there a temporary way I can do this? Yeah, since it's going to be solder, I can just heat it back up. Not happy about it. Alright guys, so I'm gonna Fuck. I'm gonna temporarily solder this together because uh, I'm going to be connecting this with a bulkhead fitting. So I'm not happy. <sighs> Alright guys, let me zoom out. Um You sucker. There we go. All right, guys. So what happened is, is I went, when I soldered it, I used one of those melt solder connectors and the wire must not have been clean. And I ended up melting through right there. So when I get back in here, I'm going to redo that connection, clean the wires off, make sure that they're actually clean, put a little flux on them. I should have put flux on them. And uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to once wrap that and then wrap the loom and I shouldn't have any problems as far as grounding out goes. Um, and it's a ground anyways, but still going to wrap it up and, and then get that uh, boot back on the cover on the back. And then this thing is at least wired janky ass down. Uh, can you even see it? Yeah, right there. You can see the sweet hole somebody cut right there. So we'll get that taken care of with some black silicone later. Get our bulkhead connector in and do this right. So I'm going to turn, uh, oh, I'll see you in a sec. All right, guys. So what I did is I started here and made a loop around this wire. And then I went the direction that the loom was already wound. And if you do this, you'll see... There's a right hand and a left hand way to wrap it. One way tucks in correctly because when they wrap this loom, it's split loom and then one goes inside the other like that. And so if you wrap it the wrong way, it pulls it out over the top and makes a mess. So you got to wrap it the correct direction. Um, and then I'm going back to the top here. And then as soon as, where'd that piece go? I'm going to snap this on. And then once that's on, it you wrap onto the back right there. Sorry, I'm ass backwards because I'm looking through the lens. You wrap it on this piece right here, and this goes like that. And then the tape, once it's snapped on, sorry guys, sorry. Once it's snapped on, the tape will retain that piece. And then this is all wrapped back up and sealed nicely. And uh, like I said, I'll get back into it and do it right at a later date. But in the meantime, this will give me a fan override. Uh, we'll, we'll do the interior portion here in a little bit. All right, guys, that's what the finished product looks like. Finished product looks like. You can see how it's wrapped up across here. And then as I progressively, and that flipped over, as I moved, I wound it up here and then I went back down onto the shaft there. And so that's, I finished right down here. And that's now taped solid. It moves with the wire. You can see it. So we'll move to the inside here. All right, guys, we're going to the, sorry, I got to get this in here. The um, wiring coming from your splice is gonna go into here and then it's gonna come out on the bottom one and there's these nice little grounds, right? Can you guys see them? Right there. So we're gonna ground out there from the switch. Gonna be beautiful. So um, again, the routing is awful, 
But in the meantime, we're just gonna get this done. Gonna make sure that these fit. They do. So we'll go ahead and get this wired up. Get you guys spaced back a little bit. Looks like I may need red connectors, hold on. So red is for 22 through 18 gauge and blue is 14, 16. And the, this is, is it gonna fit a red connector? Yeah, this is red. Gonna strip a teeny bit more of that off. Now I know everybody uses the regular crimp, but on on um, insulated connectors, you're not supposed to use the pin. You're supposed to use that flat part. So technically, you're supposed to do it like this, so you don't punch a hole in the connector. Pull on it, make sure it's good, and then we're gonna get a bit of wire to go from the ground up to the connector. So I'm gonna stretch out what I need real quick. Something like that. I can always zip tie this up or cut it off. I gotta go see what size that is up there, guys. All right, if you've got one of these Screwdrivers that you can drive from the end, they're great. And these are eights. Ford likes eights. So we're gonna use this back one here. Oh, wrong way. And they are tight, real tight. As a matter of fact, they may have Loctite on them, but boy, they are tight, tight, tight. It may be a oblong screw that basically is meant for vibration. Because that bad boy is not wanting to come out of there. Yeah, it looks like it's a triangular screw, meaning that... I think it is. So what that means is Ford designed it where this body's oblong or egg-shaped so that it's tight in the uh, through the material without having to use Loctite. Uh, so here's my terminal connector. Where are you guys at? You're up here. There's my terminal connector. Um, I've already got my length of wire, so I'm just going to do the end of it here. You know what, let's go to ultra wide. There we go. And this is a ground, so I don't have to worry about it touching anything. These eyelets are soldered, meaning they're the nicer ones where the joint is soldered. And you want the joint to face away from the male die. All right, and we're gonna put that bad boy in there. Route it up through here. Okay. Get you guys lined up. Can you see, yeah. Get that back on there. Sorry about the breathing. I always get comments about it. I've got chubby puffer syndrome. All right. You know, 
Don't strip it out. All right, that's all done, so now I gotta get that up to my switch. All right, guys, fair warning. This is probably gonna crack out that crappy little repair right there. Oops, there we go. Uh, I don't even know if you guys can see it. So uh, this setup, I'm sure Ford did some kind of later model or upfitter, I mean, you know, like a package that had more trim. This obviously just gets parked in here. I'll figure that out later. But so like I said, this is probably gonna crack back out cause it's just super glue. So we're gonna go ahead and snap it in. I went ahead and zip tied it, didn't bore you guys with that part. Let's see, the bottom's the weak part, so we'll put that in first. And we'll snap the top in. And then, um, can you guys see that? Yeah, so it doesn't matter which way these go on. They go on the left side, the two bottom pins. Ah, I've got them zip tied differently, so I'll do it like this and like that. And then this should just snap in. And how straight did I get that? It looks like it's crooked. Nope, oh, it's straight. All right, so there's the finished package. Engine fan right there. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna replace this whole thing and I'm gonna do something down here you can see this came this came unglued I've got it but I think I'm gonna replace this whole skin with something maybe a set of switches when it's flipped down I'm not sure and then I'd also like to get something for the roof but uh, in the meantime this is not illuminated right now it's just grounded just the switch part works we're gonna go out and road test it and make sure that it works um, We'll just assume, guys, that it's going to. If it doesn't, I'll make a separate video on why it didn't work, but I believe it will. You guys don't need to see me go out and drive. So, um, I'm sweating like a pig. Blood, sweat, and tears. More sweat than tears and blood. Uh, I'm gonna reroute it a little better. Like I said, I'm getting a bulkhead fitting that's got like 20 pins, so I'm gonna go ahead and mask that out ahead of time with some connectors and then just leave some of the wires just uh, heat shrinked off. And, uh, you know, it's a work truck. I wish it was nicer, but then I'd probably be upset when I was grinding on the dash. So I hope this helps someone, uh, and we'll revisit this at a later date. Talk to you guys later. Oh, I forgot one final thing. If you guys want zip tie storage for your shorter zip ties, Pringles cans work awesome.